Hello, denizens. Well, my green light or not review of Agatha all along caused a substantial freakout. No, not that I actually had positive things to say about it. Uh, and thanks to all of you who appreciated and understood the premise of green lighting a show. The issue was a simple thing I mentioned in the review regarding item five in my list of what makes a series successful. Five. Show must return to its original state or equilibrium at the end of each episode. Sorry, character growth is for movies, not TV shows. It, it was that last bit that caused the firestorm. Character growth is for movies, not TV shows. I suddenly got comments like, what about Klinger and MASH? Jakar in Babylon 5, you expletive. Don Draper in Mad Men, Walter White in Breaking Bad, Balker in Hill Street Blues, and on and on it went. I, I, I don't know why this should have been such a shock to anyone. If Sam Malone stopped being a sexist alpha male, cheers would end. If Jim Rockford's luck changed for the better, he wouldn't be living in a battered trailer on the beach. If House solved his personal demons, he wouldn't be an asshole, and on and on. There are two parts to this equation. Over the long term, a character can grow to a degree, but not change their fundamental nature. That's why we tune in to see Michael Scott put his foot in his mouth each week. The second part is sure, in an episode a character might try to change through some kind of motivation, but by the end must return to their previous disposition. Characters can add to their skills. A relationship might push them, but they don't usually change. Are there exceptions? Sure. And yes, uh, this mostly adheres to sitcoms, but you just wouldn't let it go, would you? Here are some of your additional comments. I would argue that one of your examples, Xena, had lots of growth. Gabrielle, in particular, was not the same naive girl who came on board in episode one. Thanks, Ted Nolan. You're confusing growth with trying to figure out what else we could do with Gabrielle and featuring her in the odd show gave the writers some creative license and Lucy Lawless a break from the relentless production schedule. Did she ever usurp Xena? No. Uh, 2099EK said, Angel TV series had a lot of character changes and growth. I understand your rule for sitcoms, but for dramas, I don't agree. I want to see characters grow. Once again, you're confusing growth with giving different characters more stuff to do over time. In that process, you learn more about them, but they don't fundamentally change their core personality, which is exactly why you tune in to your favorite show each time. Waltz4425 said, Belker in Hill Street Blues starts off as a loner misanthrope, but starts to mellow as the series progresses and eventually marries Robin Tataglia. Look, there will always be exceptions. And as I said in my pinned comment, you'll find these exceptions in dramas more than sitcoms. But let's take a break and let me teach you some network TV realities that you are probably not aware of. First of all, you're listing exceptions to the rule. I don't see what point you're making by presenting them, except that you're OCD. The writers generally have an idea of how things are going to go in the first year. That holds true for dramas. For sitcom writers, well, you know, they barely know how the pilot is going to work. You don't want to put too much effort into the show because, you know, it could be canceled after only airing five of the ten shows you shot. There's so little growth in sitcoms that a common writing exercise when you're trying to write the pilot is to try to write episode five or what you think is going to be five just to avoid the curse of the pilot episode. The fact remains that tossing exceptions at me is a worthless exercise because the shows that follow the rule outnumber your exceptions by a wide margin. You have the notion of creative geniuses with a planned arc. No, a show starts off like a box of crayons. The writers pull out the crayons, the colors they need to draw the scene required. It has to be that way, especially at the start, as everyone, including the actors, are trying to figure out their characters. Things will evolve out of a 
plan of necessity, H Howie Mandel was supposed to be the comic relief and saint elsewhere, but soon uh, the laughs ended up coming from the obsequious Dr. Victor Ehrlich, played by Ed Begley Jr., and Stephen Durst as Elliot Axelrod. Mandel became a serious character. Did the character change because of a grand plan or scheme? No, it was because he just wasn't funny, as originally planned. Maybe Michael Straczynski has the brain power to plan out five years of a show, but most people do not. There is no argument that the conflict between Jakar and Londo Malari was probably as close to Shakespearean as you're going to get in a space opera, and Delenn certainly went through a, a transformation. But there had to be a solid character there to start with. Tony Soprano started out as a thug and died as one. Why didn't David Chase make him a good guy? Because the show would have sucked. You fall in love with a TV show because of how the characters are, not how they are going to be. Taking off the rough edges or tempering a character is not growth. That's just writing them better over time. And yes, House got boring because it ran out of ideas and diseases of the week. Someone mentioned how Klinger changed in M.A.S.H. Dear Lord! First of all, he wasn't a primary or even a secondary character, and his drag shtick ran out of steam. What you claim as character development is usually writers panicking because they've exhausted all other ideas. Why do so many shows leave weddings to the end of the run? Because they've run out of ideas. Characters can't change or change a lot for another reason. You can't have a writing staff without a Bible. The Bible clearly outlines the limits of the characters and the universe they inhabit. If everyone was growing and changing, it would be impossible to bring staff writers on board. And the audience just doesn't want that. Trust me, many of the examples you sent me happened deep into the life of the show, like Don Draper's turn in Mad Men. Dear Lord, that was what, like uh, season five or six of seven? I I'll give you this. After five years, all bets are off. Blow the f thing up. I don't care. Writers don't think of how a series might end because they don't even know if they'll get picked up each year. If they are lucky enough to have a final year, that's the first time they'll start thinking about how to end the damn thing. Meaningful change cannot take place without a solid foundation. Just look at what a mess the Acolyte was. It was written on quicksand. Oscar Chavez 8527 mentioned Walter White. I would say he didn't fundamentally change. He just became a bigger monster. I thought he was bad from the start. I'll finish off with this final comment from 2099EX who said, I'd say Data grew somewhat over the seven seasons of TNG. Well, that was because change was what he was most interested in, because he couldn't. Humans are the opposite. We don't want to change. We stubbornly protect our egos. That's why we lie. That's what good writers exploit. Data had no ego and no capacity to lie. Character development mostly comes from the panic writers get from having to crank out hundreds of scripts for a series. Don't confuse it with having a plan. Till next time, denizens. Be seeing you.